time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. We are now to number 26, almost to the top 25. And we've got Jason Verrett, cornerback that has been through hell and back time and time and time again. Um, we're going to detail his injury history, um, his journey to the NFL, which is incredible in and of itself, the peaks and valleys that he's been through, the contract, you know, what he came back for the 49ers for, very, very favorable to the team, what that means for him, and roster implications. Uh, there's a couple options that the 49ers can go with um, with Jason Verrett. On top of all of those things, We've also got some film, all the background you could ever dream of. Uh, that's what we're doing here on the 49ers roster countdown. So he comes in at number 26. And again, this is somebody that I don't see starting early. Um, I just don't see it. The depth at the cornerback position for the 49ers this year is uncanny. We've never seen anything like this, um, probably in the past decade of the 49ers. Just an outside corner, not inside corner. Now, where he finds his way into that, that's going to be like a Jumanji-esque jungle to wade through. But we're going to attempt. So uh, let's get some history on Jason Verrett because, man, he's fun. Uh, where's jersey number two? Uh, 5'10", 188, really closer to 5'9". We'll go over his metrics in a little while. He's 31 years old, entering his ninth season. But even though he's played in nine seasons, he's only played one season, 14 games. One other season for 13 games, and then every other one, four or less games. So while, yes, he has played in nine seasons, he has not accumulated the games or the starts that would, you know, go along with that, and for good reason. Now, you go back to, uh, you know, he went to B. Gail Wilson Middle School and then Angelo Rodriguez High School um, in Fairfield, California. So uh, the fight in Mustangs just outside the Bay Area, um, not too far at all. He was a three-star rivals uh, recruit, uh, played football, track, um, you know, in football he was a running back and cornerback, um, received back of the year honors on offense his junior and senior year uh, track and field you know he ran an 11 8 his sophomore year in 2007 again kind of dating how, how long back he's been playing he's 31 um you know he never really took over track after that he kind of stopped and just focused on football and didn't really get recruited at all he had to go to santa rosa junior college before transferring to tcu and he is the very first player in santa rosa history to be drafted in the first round. I mean, this is a first round athlete, player, caliber human being, too. Great dude. Great dude. Um, it's just the injuries. That's the only thing that has stood in his way. Whenever he's been healthy, he's had one Pro Bowl year and with the Chargers who drafted him, and one more top tier. Probably could have been almost an all-pro, but a Pro Bowl player, he just missed the first couple of games, which I think knocked him out of the tie-break scenario. Um, now, after graduating high school with no scholarship offers, he goes to, you know, SRJC, and he was all conference there. was incredible. And whenever he got drafted, you know, again, I, we're, we're bouncing around a little bit here, but I think it's important to understand and kind of build the brackets around the story that is Jason Verrett. Uh, Mike McCoy, the head coach for the Chargers that drafted him, uh, said, quote, size doesn't matter to him. He's tough physical player, end quote. And, man, it, that is so true. Just because he's 5'9 doesn't really mean much because of what he's accomplished. Now, in high school, again, two-time all-conference selection, a running back and defensive back uh, was just in unreal. Uh, goes to rivals, you know, ranked by rivals as sixth best JC defensive back, um, 35th nationally for JC players. And whenever he he had two kickoff returns for touchdowns, I wish we could put him back there as a returner. There's no way in hell they'll do it. Um, he goes to TCU, graduated from TCU um, in 2013 with a degree in communications, which is awesome. Um, 2011, honorable mention, all Mountain West selection, appeared in 13 games with 10 starts. 2012 at TCU, that's whenever he kind of showed up on the scene. First team All American by Sports Illustrated, second team All American by Walter Camp, third team All American by the AP, Big 12 first team. I mean, good named Big 12 Player of the Year. I mean, started all 13 games and he was just everywhere. He had five tackles for loss, six interceptions, 16 pass breakups, also blocked a kick, um, and first Big 12 nationally with a 1.69 passes defended per game. I mean, dude was all over. 2013. 
great again. First team All American Walter Camp, second team All American, you know, AP, and just goes on and on and on. It, dude was just a freaking baller in college. I, I, I really, I had such a crush on this kid um, coming out of college that I really wanted the Niners to get him. He was one of the guys that I was just like, gosh, I hope the Niners get him. I hope the Niners get him. Um, sadly, uh, we did not. And if you look at the 2014 draft, um, and who the four, we got Jimmy Ward, which, you know, not a bad thing. And listen, this is interesting. You know, if you look just at the 2014 draft, pick 24, Darquez Denard, pick 25, Jason Verrett, pick number 30, Jimmy Ward. Guess what? We got them all now. <laughs> we got them all. Also, if you want to get even more crazy, pick 23, D Ford. We got him too. So, you know, I'm looking, I'm scanning through this first round now at all the different players, but good gosh, uh, we got so many of them. And so, you know, the fact that she, three back to back picks are currently on the roster D Ford 23, Dark Quest Denard 24, and um, Jason Verrett 25 with Jimmy Ward coming in at pick 30. So, uh, we, we got a lot of them. Uh, we really like that draft, apparently. Now, look at his metrics, what he did in the combine. Small, 5'9", 7% of NFL corners. Like, he's tiny. 189, 33%, small. 40-yard dash, whoo, ran a 4'3", 8. 4'3", speed, that's 89th percentile of cornerbacks. 10-yard split, which was his best metric, 1.47, that's 97%. He gets there quick, those short guys. Three cones, 669, Shanahan's favorite metric ever, 91 percentile. I mean, you can just go on and on. 39-inch vertical, 128-inch broad jump. Jair Alexander is the closest player comp for him. Cody Sensiball would be a distant second uh, for those that remember him playing. And so, again, he was drafted in 2014, first round, picked 25 by the San Diego Chargers. Now he gets into the league, and that's where it starts to get kind of rough. Um, yeah. Didn't get a lot of playing time his first year, 2015. Um, you know, he went out. He went out and balled out. Probably his best year. He was selected to play in the 2016 Pro Bowl as a late replacement for Daryl Revis. And then after that, it just got bad. Um, well, let's go. Let's go through these injuries. Okay, so, uh, man, as we're going through these injuries, let me throw up the film. Sorry about that. Here's some highlights of Jason Verrett with the 49ers. His time with the Niners. Um, again, uh, let, let's. Here we go. He, these are the injuries in order. 2014, labrum tear in his shoulder before the draft. He had surgery, got that fixed. 2014, stay near. Hamstring strain, missed one game, not a big deal. 2015, foot injury, one game. 2015, groin injury, one game. Hamstring, one game. So lots of small things. 2016, ACL tear, missed 12 games. 2017, knee tear, missed entire season. 2018, Pedal Achilles tear grade three, the first day of training camp. It happened during the, um, what's it called? Um, shape test, the endurance training, you know, to make sure you're ready to go. So three straight years, 16 ACL, 17 knee, 18 Achilles. 2019, now he's with the 49ers. Knee patella strain went on IR for the 49ers. 2020, or 2020, hamstring pull missed first two games and then had a great year. 2021, ACL tear week one. It's awful, man. It is awful. It breaks my heart what this kid has, has been through. He's not a kid. He's 31, but it sucks because you see the talent. You see the aggressiveness. You see the ball skills, and it just keeps getting hurt, man. It, it freaking breaks my heart. And so if I'm looking at snap counts, this is what's crazy. Four years of 70 or fewer snaps. 70 or fewer. Corners usually get that in one game. Four years of 70 or fewer. Only two games where he's played more than 13 games. Only two seasons where he's played more than 13 games. Um, now, we re-signed him to a deal May 2nd. Um, a one-year, $1.03 million. No signing bonus, no guarantee. He is on a basically vet minimum deal for the 49ers. Low risk. His whole thing, like... The COVID year kind of killed him because he would have got paid a lot of money from somebody. Um, coming off that 2020 year, he was awesome. You know, a top five corner year for sure. Finally proved he could stay healthy. And then, you know, COVID happened and nobody had the money. So he came back on a one-year prove-it deal with the 49ers. 
and he didn't prove it. So now he's back on a one-year, almost vet minimum deal with no guarantees, which sucks, man. I mean, you can look at it two ways. It's good for the 49er salary cap to have that death, but, man, it sucks. I want this dude to get what's his. Now, the good news is, if you look at his career earnings, because he was a first-round pick, he's made $24.2 million in his career. So, you know, that's awesome. I, I love that. I love that he's gotten paid. Um, it sucks he's not getting paid as much now, but $24 million, nothing to scoff at for sure. Uh, 36 uh, career starts, played in 40 games. When he's healthy, he's starting. Um, he's that damn good. And throughout his time uh, in the NFL, awesome guy in the community. Um, really, really big. He does a lot with the play 60 program, getting kids involved in being healthy. Um, he did a lot with the Vacaville neighborhood, uh, boys and girls club, you know, kids with coats, gift cards, toys, stuff like that. Christmas parties. He does a lot. And probably one of my favorite things. Uh, he tried to, in 2016, um, he tried to break the Guinness world record, uh, for most high fives on <laughs> national high five day, uh, 300 fans lined up to help him. Um, he got every single one of those in 40 seconds, but, um, I, I don't think that it counted though. Um, it, it, because I, I don't think he broke it, but he tried to. So high five to good old Jason Verrett, which is incredible. Um, now, projections. What's going to happen with this guy? This is one of the areas where I think Kyle Shanahan is going to get tricky. We got a lot of depth at corner, right? And again, it, my personal depth chart, if everybody is healthy, would be Charvarius Ward, Emmanuel Sanders starting outside, Verrett next up, then Ambry Thomas. And then that's four studs. After that, Diamador Lenore, Tariq Castro Field, some of the undrafted rookies, right? How many of those guys are you going to keep? Well, Here's the issue. They got a little caveat here because he ended the season on IR. He is still technically injured. So the 49ers could just tell him, hey, you have had, <laughs> I think, four season-ending injuries in weeks one and two of the NFL or training camp. Just chill. You're probably healthy with how his injury took place in September. Chill. Just wait. We're going to put you on the pup, physically unable to perform list, and you just sit. You're going to sit for six weeks, and we're going to bring you into the middle of the season. So we're going to guarantee you're 100% healthy, and we don't need you right now because even if you were healthy, I don't think he'd be starting. Now, if he is 100% fully healthy and confident, I think that he's better than Emmanuel Mosley. But Emmanuel Mosley is just so much more consistent, so much more reliable, not as many explosives, but you can't go wrong with either one. So if you put Verrett on the pup list – to start the season, that gives you an extra corner spot, which I think is the only way, sadly, Diamador Lenore makes this roster, which, good, gives him a little bit extra time. It, everybody wants to say Demo's going to go inside. He's not practicing there. He didn't, minicamp, he didn't practice there. Um, OTAs, he didn't practice there. It, it's, it's, it's not him. He, he's getting backup snaps there, and I mean not even first, second, or third team. Like, he's getting leftover snaps inside. He's getting a lot more work outside. That seems to be where the 49ers want him. So this gives him a little bit more time to season, builds depth on that roster, and whenever, if an injury happens, bring up Verrett, you're going to be good to go. Um, but I do like Verrett. He's going to start games this year. There's no doubt about it. If he stays healthy through camp and practice and all those things, this guy will start games. For the 49ers, he's just too damn good not to. Maybe you put him in the slot. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just keep him outside for depth. It doesn't matter. The 49ers are better with a healthy Jason Verrett. No need to rush it because he doesn't even count as a roster spot. Doesn't count against the salary cap. So cheap. So cheap. So I really hope that they are smart with the 31-year-old Jason Verrett, who if healthy, again, that's a big asterisk with this player, He's incredible. He's absolutely incredible. So patience is a virtue. I hope that they use that here on Jason Verrett and be smart with it. Shanahan's sneaky with that roster stuff. So that's my projection. Excited to see number two out there again for the 49ers. He's been through so dang much, and he's just such a damn good player. want to say thank you to Josh. And, and I mean, these guys, these researchers, Anthony, Josh, they have crushed it this series, finding Guinness World Records for high fives. Are you kidding me? Love those guys. Uh, appreciate all that they do for this series and all the research. And, man, we're just going to keep counting them down here at the 49ers Rush roster countdown.